here at Port St. John's. I've got a live caro. I've got three in total. As we arrived here, one of our locals are on with a cob now. Looks like a lovely fish. One of those six to ten kilo cob. And we hope he actually gets it out. We wish him all the best. But this is the conditions that we look for. It's 10, 11 o'clock at night. I'm throwing with my trusty old rod and my dog fight. 50 pound braid and that cob is coming in between a whole lot of rocks it don't look too good for me but yeah guys let's have a look how it goes okay basically we've arrived here my first throw it's been in the water about 30 seconds I'm using my standard grinder outfit, my elite with my dogfight, 50 pound braid, my caro as a live bait. The north actually is blowing quite hard and as you see we just had a nice cob come out. This place is phenomenal for catching those nice cob. Most of the cob that are coming out at the moment are all between 5 and 15 kilos. Last night there was one of 44 kilos. So let's see what we can do. Okay, just to let you know, these are different ways of rigging a caro for cop. Go for it, he shows. Yes. So we've got one in the top, one on the side here. And we're not going too deep into the skin as you can see. That's the holding hook. That's the hook that normally catches the cob on. Simple as that guys. There we go. And that's what caught the last cob that we actually saw come out. A normal slippery slide here. One return. And just explain to us the bite. What did you feel when you actually felt it? Well, the people that your bed goes to the sticks and stuff. Yeah, it starts to vibrate, yes. Yeah, it starts to vibrate. You just get slack later. There we go, guys. So your live bait starts going crazy, it starts vibrating because it obviously realizes that there's a cob around or something that's going to prey on it. So it starts going crazy. So there's your first sign to say, hey, something's happening. Then all of a sudden, as the uncle just said now, perfect way of catching it. And that's how he rigs his uh, slippery slide. There we go, guys. Have a look at that. Guys, this is our first bright and early morning at Port St. John's. We've just uh, driven from uh, Spotted Grunter where we stayed last night. I'm here with Dino and Prenelan. We're going to be basically catching our live bait, our shed and our quarantine. And this afternoon we'll show you how to catch carp on it. This time of the year Port St. John's becomes a very popular fishing destination. Anglers go here right throughout the year, but especially just after the winter time, a lot of Garrick and Cobb pass through this pristine river system. Now anglers should remember that the Cobb come in specifically to breed in these rivers, so therefore think twice before keeping a specimen. They'll stay up in the river till end September October when they come back out again. And a lot of big Cobb are caught here every year. Sadly, a lot of big Cobb are also kept. Once again, we ask anglers to fish responsibly. Hey guys, um, we are at Ngozana. Uh, we just took a scenic walk um, past the cave and stuff uh, onto uh, this small island. Um, I'm going a little bit different from Ray. Uh, we can do a kill two birds, one stone. Um, so while Ray's uh, trying to catch some carols and stuff like that, um, I'm going to go a little bit different. I'm going to throw a spoon for shirt. Uh, just so we have a few um, variety in terms of live baits. Yeah, basically I'm using um, 
my old trusty PG1146 and I've matched that with a PG5000 uh, which is a little bit of an overgun um, but it just helps me in case that bigger fish picks me up. Uh, on that I've got 30 pound J bread, uh, straight 300 meters and uh, yeah, confident it'll do the job. Hi guys, um, I'm targeting shad today on drift bait. Um, biting, biting here, yeah, so hopefully you get a few for live bait. Uh, my tackle I'm using today is a Saltist 11.6 uh, power spin and um, I'm using a Vidal 4000H. Now make no mistake, you can go to Port St. John's with a world of expectation. At the end of the day, a lot of influencing factors plays a role in your success. Basically, what we're trying to do now is get live bait, live carrows and that, live shad. So, <clears throat> the excellent angler I am, I'm actually going to try and catch a quarantine, which I haven't done for quite some time. And I'm almost positive I will get one or two. What we're using, again, if you want to have a look, it's a very simple double hook system. It's a 92247 size 9. I've got my little crossfire and my little BG. I'm just trying to unwind my trace here. And I'm going to put on sardine as bait. So basically what I'm doing is I've got a double hook trace. A little sinker is going to go on here. Like I say, my light little crossfire, which is excellent for catching uh, bronze bream, stone bream, uh, quarantine, all the teens. And yeah, that's basically what we're going to do. Let's go and see if I can actually catch a fish. And what we do is we just basically go through it, no cotton. Off of the trip for me, a lovely little pinky like that. <laughs> oh no! The biggest challenge in this area is to get live bait. Normally the guys drive down south to Mgazana to fish for live bait. And as you've probably already gathered, quarantine is one of the very popular baits. Some guys put in a lot of effort to go out deep sea and find mackerel or other live bait species. Well, I just managed to get a, a, a nice size shad now on a number 10 hook. Uh, only God knows how it didn't bite me off. Um, but yeah, so there are some shad around as well. Um, so what I've done is I've just changed to the normal Toby spoon. Um, and we're going to try and load that pull up with some shad. Regardless of the success in the fishing, this area is well worth visiting purely on the scenery. My second little fish, a little black tail. And he's definitely going back in the ocean. Not our target species. Yes, and sometimes it can be easier catching a big cob than catching the live bait to catch the big cob. Well, while searching for quarantine, you also come across Toby's as well. So that's minus points. Now that's fishing. Catching the live bait is sometimes as much fun, if not more, than looking for those bigger, elusive predators. It is now in August and still there's a lot of bait fish activity, maybe sardines or any other bait fish. The bird action and dolphins made this evident. Just way too many pinkies here. Very few carrots. I think we ended up with three fish for two and a half hours. We're gonna head back to our accommodation at Spotted Granta, have a little breakfast. Now, Spotted Granta is one of our old favorites when it comes to accommodation in Port St. John's. 
situated on the banks of the Port St. John's River. Not only can you just fish from your doorstep and get some good catches, but they're also well equipped with bait shop as well as a tackle shop. Among the facilities is also a barge and a deep sea boat. The accommodation itself is of the highest standard. The perfect sunset off your porch just finishes off any trip to Port St. John's.